looked at the weather for 10, 15 days out the whole time. So anyone that cared to listen to me across the week in the lead up to that grand final, all I was speaking about was a one day grand final and the different scenarios of how we'd win. I remember driving past the ground, I think about 9.30 in the morning and seeing the covers weren't on properly and letting the boys know. And it was frustrating because there's no reason why we shouldn't have had two full days in. Um, so it's sort of a bit of a roller coaster really, out there with leaf blowers and mopping up bloody mud and it's 30 degrees. That's where mm -hmm. fires, um, Jerry, yeah, fires, Jerry, I think it was fires when you got the um, Ghostbuster oh, vacuums yeah. from um, Yeah, we had got one from Kenards. Yeah. Grease's dad obviously went and got one as well. We got some kitchen sponges from the world. <laughs> oh, that, that, yeah, <laughs> that was horrendous. <laughs> that was probably horrendous. Oh, without a doubt, if that didn't happen, there was no way we were getting on the kitchen sponges on Sunday. If we had, <laughs> if we had have just left it as the umpires wanted us to, there is no doubt in my mind that we would have turned up Sunday and shook hands and gone straight to the pub. So for Becca and his crew to be able to do that. Um, not won us the game because we still have to go and win it, but gave us an opportunity to be able to win the game. We got perilously close again on the Sunday, not playing at all. Um, Ten minutes before the scheduled toss were out there and North, who'd been really good throughout, started to go, oh, I'm a bit slippy here. Am I running between wickets? As you would when you're in that situation. Yeah, we would have been doing the same. And so I think Sean went back inside and we actually went out there with a bit of brinkmanship with the two umpires and just said, well, it's either going to be right now or it's never going to be right. So we're, we're happy to call off the game right now, but we're not, we're not going to play in two hours time. So I think that, that was the umpire's preference was to do some waiting around and play later in the day. And we just said kind of, we weren't going to participate in the charade like that. We're, it's either on or it's not. Um, put the onus on them to make a call and they did, which uh, pretty thankful in the end of that. So I suppose at this point we literally had nothing to lose because you know, mentally we were still wanting to win the game, but realistically so much has to go right for it to happen that it's sort of just so far away from actually happening that you're just sort of going to go, well, we'll have a crack at it. If we can't, you know, make any inroads in the first hour, hour and a half, then, well, we'll just might dawdle out for an hour and then we, we head off. Hello and welcome to Stinson Oval in Queen's Park for the GCA One Decider. It is the grand final between North Geelong and East Belmont. North Geelong has won the toss and elected to bat. In my head, that was the only way that we could win the game was to win the toss. Um, and upon reflection, it obviously didn't pan out that way. But at the same time, I, I was actually quite, um, not saddened, but it was pretty deflating because we sort of, that was our only opportunity to be able to win the game. And then when it came down the wrong way and then Paul obviously, or well, I think, made the wrong decision and, and, um, and batted and gave us a chance. But um, yeah, up until that point, it was all sort of optimistic. And then literally, it's, you know, I can see the coin still now in slow motion, just going the wrong way and just me just sinking. But then within three seconds, uh, Pat being optimistic again because he called the result that we were going to do anyway. But it was almost split around the competition. You talk to people and they're going, oh no, you, you always bat and you control the game. I think that, I don't know if there's a little bit of, they wanted that sense of achievement in being able to bat and do something on the day. I think that was to earn it a bit, more. a bit more, try and do that. So there was probably some integrity in them doing that. The big news, of course, Dave Lenine included in the East Belmont lineup. Lenine comes in now to Hall and Hall's Yay! driving that beautifully through the covers. And it was, it was late Friday night that he comes in too. He, yeah. He, yeah. he went and <clears throat> we had physio all day across the Friday and then Sean, myself, Jerry and him were at East Belmont and he had to just bowl off his full run and we, Sean and I were on the phone to each other on the way there and had both going, we're just going here to give Dave every chance because of who he is. We, we thought he was no hope. I think I got there at one o'clock Friday and I left <coughs> at 7.30, 8 o'clock Friday night and it was, I reckon I, I was actually going to struggle to get up so I think I ran about five kilometres. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was, was cool. It's an absolute credit to him that he managed to get his body right to not only just be able to play. Like there's, there's a difference between just turning up and being on a team sheet, but actually being able to contribute and still bowl at his um, pretty high standards that he sets for himself. We got, probably felt like it was 75% tops. Um, but yeah, no, worked out right because everyone chipped in. We'll be tired at 75%. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I thought it. I thought it. When, when balls were carrying to walk his knee, um, I thought, Mate, this is what they depend on. <laughs> and probably judging me, last two balls I bowled the poorly, we were attacking the stumps both of them for four. I'm probably going to be selfish. <laughs> Get ready for the second over today. Dylan McMahon is going to be coming in from... Having Dave there settles everyone a bit, just to make sure we're, we're set, we're right to go, and, and probably the same with Dylan from the other end. On the coming in now, he's bowling to Hall, and Hall is also looking to... Yeah, I think that's the first all Chris stopped at point for the year. Interestingly, they have two very short galleys there at the moment. It's a very interesting fielding ploy, and uh, as we know, uh, Chris Williams, the uh, East Belmont coach, is a, uh, a very clever tactician and uh, often thinks left of centre, and. And certainly that's another another piece of evidence of that. Goal short there was really comfortable forward in that last over. So just pitching it back a back a yard. McMahon again. And this time it's flown up in the air, it's off the bat. We've got our first wicket for the afternoon. Celebrating before we got that wicket actually. I called it off the bat, but didn't catch it. In that uh, gully trap, I think it's fair yeah. to say, which we've been talking about. David Lenin into Braden Spunner. We've got the two slips and two gullies in place again as we're in, and just leaving through the keeper there, pretty comfortable. Good fire through though. That was mainly because if I'd have pulled up quickly, I would have snapped it. <laughs> like he is today. Just went back cutting. Oh, fantastic. What an absolutely great catch there. That's the first time I've seen it on a big screen. It doesn't look as impressive. <laughs> <laughs> when you had it on your phone, you kept showing everyone. And I was like, that's awesome. And now it's like... It's a bit floaty. It looks a bit, like, yeah. Oh, it just looks like he's falling for it, or yeah. He could have probably stayed, ran into the ball, took it two hands, to be honest. Mm -hmm. But to be fair, that's that's the second ball he stopped at point. <laughs> <laughs> probably give us hope, though. Yeah. You've got to take every chance to win a game like yeah, that. Yeah. So it gave us hope. Probably, that's the that sort of thing keeps everyone up and about and bubbling, too. You know, that's the, just like a run out or something like that. They always, you know, get to bonus wicket. Ball on 14 from 42 balls faces Lenin. He cuts this That's time it. through just forward of point. That's a beautiful shot. That one will race away to the boundary. In again, bowls to Vassalou, who drives shot. down the ground. That's a beautiful shot. That is one of the more difficult shots to play, but he does it exquisitely on that occasion. In my head, I, just, I didn't want to be the team that plays till 5 o'clock because we think we might get 8 for 2 in 12, uh, 10, 10 balls, and then we're going to knock up. 150 in 10 overs, it's not how I want to lose a grand final. So um, I reckon we had probably, yeah, half an hour, 45 minutes at two for 60. And then maybe we might've got the tea break and then that was it. Uh, I would say I was feeling a little bit different to Sean. And I remember at the time, I think it was Mike talked about it at drinks or at the break saying, oh, if they'd have gone longer than, much longer than two for 60. I didn't have that feeling in me. I was, I was a bit surprised, like, because I'll, I'd sort of set myself on just trying to play the day and was like trying to be in the moment rather than worrying too much about what's going to happen too far ahead. Zach had a bit of a mixed bag to start with a couple of full tosses, and some nerves early, but what he's capable of, because he's quite raw as a ball that's just going to get you out. And on this wicket, which was pretty, pretty flat, pretty spongy, he gets one just to, to pop that little bit extra just with his height and his action. Takes it across Hawley and we're back in. And that's the third North Geelong wicket to fall. That is the captain, Sam Hall, falling for 28. And his team now move on to 3 for 60. Ferguson, the new batsman, coming out for uh, for North Geelong. And it's, it's it's almost a conveyor line of quality batsmen, this North Geelong lineup, isn't it? Fergie's someone that can come out and he can get to 50 in a blink of an eye and it's just game over. Alex definitely roughed him up. Three or four down would have been their target, I would imagine. As, uh, we're in there to, to the new batsman, Ferguson, getting jammed up there. Not feeling really comfortable with that mix of height and pace. Again, angled in at that sort of leg stump. Definitely not comfortable down there as Wilton's in again, once more. And ducking is, uh, is Ferguson there. As a fast bowler, that's the best thing to see. And the keeper taking it in front of the eyes. Mixing on strike, short ball. Oh. And getting hit twice um, by someone who's probably not great for the ego, and therefore he's seen mm. trying to hit, you know, <laughs> his third ball, his face off sack. 
uh, six. Yeah, that would be wicked. As we run again. Oh, back to a length there. Chance. Chance. Untaken. That's actually a real good catch because yeah. Dylan made some good ground to get there and um, there's probably only one other person that would have made it to get there and that's his twin. Yeah. Um, but the rest, you still wouldn't have made it, mate. Not that sure. Maybe this one. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously we haven't seen Mitch face um, Walter here yet, but uh, big stuff from the young kid. Shot. Oh, Walter pitching up again. Touch wider. And Vass just helping himself to a great shot there through the covers for four, as we've been saying. Like to play shots when the ball's there. That one's definitely there, pitched up. Uh, you don't mind seeing him go for runs, though. I guess the name of the game for East Belmont is wickets. Um, and, you know, you, you invite the shot, and, you know, sometimes you get the goods, but that time Vass is too good. Absolutely going after that one. Wasn't going to hold back there. No, just that, that, that little bit of too much. There's always a run out and a collapse too. That's the bit that we were mentioning the whole time. And pushed him back of the length. Threw for the quick single play is on it. Starts! Took a search, Sean. Well, it's funny because those ones at training, that whole pretty much march, I hadn't picked one up clean or anywhere, hit anywhere near the stumps either. So it was actually more of a surprise. Out by yeah, the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Balls the umpiring though. Yeah. yeah. The correct hit you're giving it. And the celebration from, like, so look at the umpire there. He can see what, so got Barzi at first sloop, Alex at second. Yeah. And then Viv, you're at Gully. Yeah. And I've already given it. Lock it down the start. So he's got, what, three. Seven East Belmont people in his eye line. Yeah. Who, as soon as that ball hits the stumps, they're so all up. Yeah. Like that's. Oh, even H coming gets there, down. <laughs> even H coming there from gully, uh, from cover there. That's a good day to move all that. Poor Mitchy, look at him. Funnily enough, the two times I've played, my last two premierships I've played, one juniors, one seniors. Mitch and Blake Troy, five mates on dust. Because it happened to a good mate of mine, Mitch Troy makes it even sweeter. <laughs> <laughs> Have you reminded that? It's yeah, multiple times. <laughs> we were really up and about after this that. This is really good, this over. Yeah. Like, I think he has actually six balls at him. Yeah. I think like, compared to his first spell, he'd gone away and cracked it. And then when. Um, we got those, Zach got those couple of wickets, that really fired him up. That's where cutting, caught it, gully, he's gone. Vassalou having a crack outside the off stump, and Wilton struck. East Belmont, red hot right now. Another great catch in the gully. We've seen them take their chances so far, and another great case of it there. There's a gap there for him. In once more. Looks like we've got a caught behind, and he's been given, fishing outside the off stump there. A really class, class bowler. Um, he might just give Cam a couple of problems here. It'll be interesting to see what happens. McMahon's coming in now to bowl to Fitzpatrick, and he's edged that. It's out. Wow, we It's came on here, Adam. First ball for Williams. It's a full delivery. It's popped up in the air. And I think he might have a wicket. It's such a just like shit piece of cricket. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, it's. Then what's the lead? Coach me, coach me, coach in the biggest game of the year, and it's just like something happened under first. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is this over is I was talking a bit the other night. Is that when I realised we're going to win? This this over here, I'm feeling thinking about wicket or something, and I turned around to Dave and I started like getting really nervous before you know all. Uh, what had been happening is just like it's a whirlwind and before that you're not even really thinking about the game and then literally like I think it's over I'm like holy shit we're gonna win and then I like lose all my feeling in my hands turn around to Dave I'm like fuck I'm really nervous Dave and he just like goes oh you're right man. <laughs> <laughs> we're fortunate enough to get the 30 minutes extra before break which is really helpful for us but even then it gets to the last over so if Charlie doesn't take a wicket this over, they then get to bat after T and it really it probably that probably takes them to the rain at the end of the day in yeah. hindsight. Well, yeah. I don't know, I was still following the whole day, I didn't think I was gonna bowl. If I didn't bowl Charlie in this game, Moose would probably never ever talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> and Sean's like, Yeah, you're the bowl next time I'm like, oh why not? 
was so sore. I just did not want to bowl. What were you sore from? Running fairly at the whole range. I wanted to bring him on a bit earlier, um, in reality, but because we only needed one more wicket, um, I just wanted to keep going with Dylan Chris, see if we couldn't, you know, pinch one. In this game. That's one from Walter. That's it. That's it. Oh. And that'll do. Yeah, that's it. 86. Crikey. They are all out for 86 here this afternoon. Kingwell, the batsman out. Welcome back to Queen's Park Oval here. We've got Cam Alfred coming in from the River End, steaming in. Tucked off leg stump. You want to chase less than 100 to win a game, yeah. and then to boot the grand final, then obviously like, you're, going to, you're going to take the hand with it. You know, take that every day of the week. But you don't go in thinking it's going to be easy. It's, not, it's never going to be easy. I just wanted half an hour of Sean trying to slap it and get it there as quick as possible. I could, yeah. It was torturous that sitting was. through. It was like if Sean come off for 20 minutes here, look past him, we're sitting on the deck. Which is probably what in my head I wanted to do, <laughs> but I knew that's probably not what the right <laughs> thing was to do. Uh, in the end, I only faced you know, three or four balls. But I just remember that tea break. I was just, I had so much going on and I just, I was so relieved that we just got them out. And there's just that whole build up of a day and a half of not knowing whether we were going to be able to play or what was happening then to sort of nearly be game over before we even start and then it was nearly game over in the game and then to be finally back in the game and then tea break I was like right now what do we do um I I you know I've watched I've thought about this innings myself a lot of times it's sort of like where did it go wrong but I can't even remember facing a ball as we have Alfred in once more on that's catch caught the lead that's the up in it big 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 Nice little spray there from Kano Cheers. <laughs> Sean knew, like when he came yeah. off, he, he said, don't, like, that ball wasn't that good, like, I just played it poorly. Don't, don't think that he's on top of this, like, I just played a shit shot. It was very carving the whole day, yeah. I think. As we have Cam Alford coming in here. And Ford is defending his link guard, looking pretty comfortable there with that one. Looks to be pitched up around the middle stump, off stump region. Just patting that back end of the bowler. Pretty comfortable. So uh, we're taking the ball away from the left hander as well, are we? Yeah, I think he. You no, know, they're going to come out. But you just hope that if you can get through first 10 overs, first half an hour, 40 minutes, without too much damage, that the life's just going to fall out of them. It's just going to. The enthusiasm is going to go. And they just know they're on borrowed time. He knows Alfred's in once more to Linica. Pass the umpire now. Pitching up and oh, shot. Oh, what a shot. Doesn't even move for that one. Matt Lineker. This is in once more, Alfred. Digging way out of the pads. There's a nice shot from Lineker there. Coming in uh, over the shoulder of Alfred. As he's in once more, pitching up. Lineker, that square drive once more. Fantastic shot. Just back, back to the point. Andrew Bars facing Kingwell as he comes in. As he's driving and he's perfect and he's behind. Yeah, that's a pretty out of character shot that from Barzi too, which speaks to yeah how good those other innings are. And he's got an outstanding finals record and grand finals record. But yeah, in this mini chase, like he he let, lets that ball go nine yeah, times out of ten. Definitely, I think we got to you can't underplay the fact that their bowling attack's very very good as well. We spoke about with with Williton for East. Um, Fitzy has the ability to really push him through. Um, big, strong boy, so... Um, He's coming in with the breeze as well from that river room, which is... be interesting to see the game plan here. Looks like they've pushed the, uh, the fielder from square leg back. Is he going all the way, about halfway, three quarters to the boundary there. So making their plans pretty clear to the batsman. He would bounce through sharp, but it, yeah. when he pitched it up, he certainly was not as quick. Um, and I felt like I, you could see the bouncer coming. You can about there. winds up. Yeah. Um, you could just sort of see it, and I was pretty happy actually with him trying to bowl short because it's never going to get me out, really. Um, in terms of, so like, I, I, I've got to play a false shot rather than, you know, he nicked Hayden off with a good ball bowling top of off stump sort of thing. So, but he changed his mindset then after you drove him for those. Mm -hmm. You hit that those good shots and then flipped them off your legs. Yeah. square drives. He had to change his. Mindset down and how he was going to get you out. Yeah, yeah. 
not that way. No. <laughs> <laughs> just say every shot, every, every ball he faced, he was just getting more comfortable. Um, and um, yeah, I just didn't think he was he was going out for less than what he did. But I mean, it's weird how you can get a pass on for just getting started. Okay? <laughs> Unbelievable. But I'm not sure because he was. I think he was injured the last game of the year or uh, a couple of games. So it might be interesting to see how his his body's feeling. Oh, fantastic shot, McMahon, picking up that length and that width straight away from Kingwell, uh, just easing back onto that cut shot. Fitzpatrick is in and he's edging. He's got McMahon edging and another wicket has fallen for East Belmont. Another twist in this tail this afternoon as uh, Fitzpatrick coming in to Ingalls. Ingalls is edging again. Falls just short of the field. I'm um, uh, getting nervous. <laughs> <laughs> right now? Yeah, I haven't watched it. I'm currently babysitting Charlie, who's officially nervous at this point as well. <laughs> I was up in the rooms actually. I was too scared. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I went up there and said, mate, just come and sit down. He's like, no, no, I can't leave. No. I was in a mess. No, I couldn't sit down there. I was too nervous. Kingwell. He's going to bowl to Lineker now. Lineker looking to drive and drive. He does. He's beaten one fieldsman, but not the other. Kingwell coming in now to Lineker again. Lineker on the front foot again, driving. This time he gets it through the gap. Tending out towards. I'd I mean, I shifted from Sean to you, and I hope he does this real quick. When we're getting over there, <laughs> the, uh, the, the, the only option for me was let's, let's just do it really quickly. Uh. Matheson in to Lineker, and Lineker's playing for this appeal for LBW, and up goes the finger. This is probably the first time in our whole chase now where I've gone, we might not actually win this. Or, you know, it's it's gone back to 50 50, or, you know, not in our favour. East Belmont lose their fourth wicket. They're four for 54, chasing that 87, and a great delivery from Tom Matheson then to McMahon. And McMahon slashing, he's found the same gap. He's, he's gone into this innings, I reckon, doing with a heap of confidence yeah. off the month that he's had batting wise. It's yeah. just really mature. Like, he's just, like, I don't know how old he was, 21. Yeah. He's been playing first for five years. So, in first level cricket, he's starting to get a bit of experience. In life, he's only been very quite young. But just, he sort of just walks out there now like he belongs and he's actually, sort of something must have clicked in his head. He's like, actually, I can compete and outperform a lot of people that I'm playing against at the moment. I don't know if you would have wanted any two other batsmen batting at this stage either. Like, quick between the wickets yeah. as well. Yeah. As we have Tom Matheson coming in again, slashing outside the off stump. Is Dylan looking to get a piece of that one? Really, uh really showing intent the East Belmont pair. Someone's uh, shown them the radar. We'll see how these boys get on. The weather coming... Oh, so good. <laughs> <laughs> the weather Slum coming... sweep over straight. <laughs> <laughs> was actually sort of good in a way because it forces you. Yeah. yeah. Like, you, you, it's not on you when the, you need to make the decision to start trying to up the rate. You, you're like, well, we've got to start doing it, otherwise we're just going to run out of time. So it sort of takes the worry of the decision when you should be doing it out of your head, out of your yeah. choice, and you just got to do it. We have Fitzpatrick in here. Oh, he's looking to get onto him. Oh, that's more. Steaming in from the river end. Pulling straight. Up. It's completely hard in our stuff here because I said earlier that all week I'd set up that we're winning in a day, this is going to happen. So nothing was a shock to me at all across the day, even though that sounds strange. But it was only. Oh, <laughs> It's only when Dylan gets a boundary, I think, from a misfield, gets us within two runs where we get, that's where I get the first realisation of, you know what, we're, we're actually going to win this game. Big slash over the top, mid on. It's going to plug in the outfield. They're going to get back for two. You see, just pushing for the third. He's going to turn and go. Good decision. I wanted to strike, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Matheson's in. And that's it, I think. No, not it. Matheson in once more as Ingalls is flicking off his pads. He's worked away the wow. At this moment, Lockie's going, Dylan, run, run, run. And I've just gone, what? It's four. We've won. And I jump on him and knock his hold off. Gotten the win there with a four for East Belmont, winning the Buxton GCA Division 1 Grand Final.
That's the first time I've actually seen it on mm. video. I've seen the still photos of Lockie, uh, Lockie and Dill embracing, but um, it was a pretty ugly shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quick. Yeah. <Cowboy> cats. <laughs> we started to get a bit agricultural there at the end, didn't we? Yeah. We didn't score many else off. No one charges out in the field to meet him, which is really disappointing. So I end up 30 metres out on the field on my own thinking we're going out to meet them and everyone stayed on the sideline. And Chris started running, dude. Chris started running and no one went with him. So he did a circle and came back to the group. Did you boys come in sort of your normal level? I don't know. Everyone, everyone kept saying to us, like, you don't realise how big this is. Like, it's going to take like a while for you to actually yeah. realise. That hasn't really sunk in for me yeah. as well. Like, literally, it's probably, I don't know, one of the greatest, great followings in GCA. One of, the, one of the best feelings that you'll ever have sporting in your life. Yeah. So when I go up and lift the cup and you get to see everyone that's contributed to it because we're really lucky that a lot of families, a lot of East Valley people that really care about the club had all turned up. I really feel guilty sometimes when the whole club sports the ones. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's great. It's, it, but you've, because it's so there's so much support and that, and yeah, um, you just want them to be a, a part of it as much as they can. Because the truth is that they are. That whole night, you can see the blokes like Jerry and Flags, mm-hmm. even my old man, all been there for so long, and you just knew it meant so much to them. And even if they didn't want to show it, they just couldn't help but express how how much it did mean. The one what five six years ago, we won as well was the same. Just the club room's full, um, everyone's just just couldn't be happier and, and prouder of the club. Oh, no.